Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for October 19th, 2018. This is episode 77. And today what we're going to talk about is intelligent automation using Microsoft Flow. Now what we're going to talk about today is a presentation that I gave yesterday in Phoenix. So I guess two days, one day before this was recorded, two days before this video is published. And as part of my session, and I've included a link to the entire deck here, I introduced this concept of intelligent automation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to actually go ahead and use a technology, use a technology called Doc Parser that allows us to intelligently scrape PDF documents and then actually process them. So intelligent automation is not new. It's not something that I've coined. It's not my own term. But what it does represent is an emerging trend within the industry. So here I've got a, a link to an article provided by KPMG, a large consulting company, where they estimate the current size of the intelligent automation market at about $12.4 billion and growing to $232 billion in 2025. So what this actually represents is, like a, is a big opportunity. And I think it's a big opportunity for many organizations to use technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics process automation in order, to, in order to automate their business processes and actually extract even more value. Now, the point of my session here is really to describe how you can achieve some of these or address some of these use cases using Microsoft Flow. Now, naturally, uh, our service itself doesn't cost a lot of money. It doesn't cost tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars like some of these other RPA platforms do. And I think what I do want to show you is that Flow is capable of performing some really interesting automation using these types of technologies without breaking the bank. So the example I want to go through today is automating forms processing. So this is an apartment company, if we could consider it Contoso, where they get many different applications to rent an apartment. They historically would have got these applications and then they'd have to do swivel chair integration. So they would be copying, you know, from the, the email into another system. That's not a great use of anyone's time, especially not today. So what we can actually do is, is take these inbound PDF applications, which is obviously a very popular document format, but there's been challenges with actually being able to extract some of that data historically. But today what we can use is a, a third party connector called Doc Parser that allows us to scrape this information off. So we can have Flow receive these emails, detach the attachments, send it to Doc Parser, run some different rules, parsing rules inside a Doc Parser, and then we'll actually feed our downstream business process. Now in this case, we're going to go ahead and use Dynamics 365 CE in order to manage this onboarding process. So what we can do is scrape information about the person from the PDF document, create or update contacts inside of D365. And then what we can do is actually create an opportunity. And this, with this opportunity, we can now manage the opportunity and determine whether or not this applicant is a good fit to rent in our complex, our building. Now what's also interesting about this scenario is we can actually feed this information to Power BI as well so that we can actually gain insights in terms of what does our demand look like for these different apartments. Do we have a lot of good candidates coming in? Do we have some poor candidates? What does our inventory look like? We can visualize all of this in order to help make decisions around whether or not we should allow this person to rent an apartment. Now, we've talked about approvals in the past, and approvals are great, but approvals tend to deal with macro level situations. What if you need to actually have some very specific checkpoints or tasks within a business process that you need to actually follow in order to complete that business process? And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna introduce a concept called business process flow and how they can work with our traditional automation flows in order to work through these business processes. So for example, as part of the management approval in terms of you know, deciding whether or not this person should be allowed to rent, we're gonna to wanna to do, say, a background check. So we're gonna validate their income. We wanna validate their job history. We may wanna check in on their pet to see if their pet 
um, aligns with our policies for pets. And lastly, we're also going to want to understand if there's the correct amount of inventory. So we can actually create all of these different checkpoints in our business process. And then actually, once we're gone through that business process, choose to approve or reject and send a notification back to the applicant. So let's dive into a demo and see this in action. So here's our starting point. Here is the application that an applicant will actually go ahead and fill out. As you can see, I'm in Word here. I haven't used any sort of fancy tools to enable this. I've just basically gone ahead and created a form that includes contact information, the current address, the current employment information, the desired apartment configuration, and their pets. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a PDF, and then we're gonna email this and then let Flow pick up that email attachment. So here I am, I'm in my email box, inbox, and I've got an email in draft, and, and here is the PDF document that we're going to send in. I do have a subject of approval rental because I have a filter on my Flow to actually receive that email, or receive, look for emails that contain that specific subject line. So let's go ahead and click send. And while that's processing, let's take a quick look at Doc Parser. So this is a third party service. Uh, you do need to create a subscription for it. And what you go ahead and do is you build these different parsing applications. So here I have my Contoso Apartments rental applications. And then what I can do is upload sample documents, much like we've seen with other examples like Computer Vision or Lewis, we provide a bunch of samples. And then we go ahead and create rules. And these parsing rules are, are very straightforward. I can go ahead and just add a parsing rule, indicate the type of parsing rule. Is it going to be text? Is it someone's name? Is it a date? Is it a checkbox? Etc. Uh, we also have some abilities to parse tables, deal with like variable positions of text, or deal with fixed text. Now, if we go into first name, and we'll check out the first name parsing rule, we will be able to see exactly where on the PDF we're expecting the first name to be. And we could go ahead certainly and adjust this and make it larger if we wanted to or make it variable as I mentioned before. But that's how we basically go through the entire document, just essentially clicking, um, dragging and dropping, sliding, and that's how we create these different rules. And then the output of the doc parser service is whenever they get one of these PDF documents in, they know exactly how to parse it. And then what they'll do is return essentially a JSON message to flow that includes just these attributes and the related values. And that's really where all of the power is in this specific scenario. So I'm now over in Flow, and I have two flows that help me accomplish this business process. The first one is very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, look for new emails that have the rental application keyword filter, and then we will go ahead and uh, process those emails and for each attachment that exists, we're gonna go ahead and upload it to our service, our doc parser service. There we can see that it just ran six seconds ago and we can see that there was one attachment and it was uploaded to the doc parser service. So now the doc parser service is going to parse this document and then call our other flow. And in this flow, what we do have is a doc parser trigger. And we can see that this is currently running and I'll show you why here shortly. So inside of the flow, we're gonna actually go ahead and parse this document. I do have just some variables that are being used um, just to supplement the process. But what we're gonna do first is we're going to use the email address that was provided in our application form to see if this person already exists in our CRM. And we're gonna do that based upon the email address that was passed from Doc Parser. So we can see all of the dynamic content over here, which represents all of the data fields that exist in our PDF document. If we do have records returned, and we're gonna use an expression here of length, and we're just basically going to check the length of the return value from our list records action. And if we have more than one record, what that means is that the contact already exists, or sorry, more than zero records, that means the contact already exists. So in this case, what we wanna do is make sure that we have the most up-to-date information for this specific applicant, and we're gonna go ahead and update their contact. So we're gonna use all of this different dynamic content and actually upload the 
or update the appropriate fields. Alternatively, if we don't have a, any records for this person, we're going to go ahead and create a contact. And once again, we can go ahead and do this and populate the dynamic content based upon all of the uh, data that was provided in our PDF document. So that's pretty cool. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to link this specific contact to a BPF, a business process flow. And we, what we've done is I've created a, a separate business process flow um, in the, that designer. And now what I can actually go ahead and do is create a record in this business process flow. And we're going to just basically call the business process review, then the person's first name, last name. And then we also want to be able to link it to the contact ID. And I'll show you here in just a few moments why this is important and how this really now links us together with an automated flow and a BPF, a business process flow. Next, what we want to do is we need to go ahead and get the current currency for the default currency for our dynamic CE implementation. So we'll just go ahead and make a, a very easy call to the currencies entity and indicate an ISO currency code of USD. Once we have that, we then need to populate that or include that when we go ahead and create the opportunity. And naturally we want this opportunity to be linked to our specific contact. And so that's what we're doing here was we're going to provide the potential customer and provide their contact ID. And then we'll also include other information that comes from our PDF, including the name of the property that they want to rent. And then we'll include information about their work history, where they currently live, how much they currently earn, and we'll populate the current situation and description fields with this data. Once we've created the opportunity, we also want to create or update our Power BI real-time streaming data set. And so what I've gone ahead and done is created a Power BI data set that models you know, all of the same data that we're publishing into Dynamics so that now we have some real-time visibility in terms of these new applications that are being made. Next up, what we will do is we'll start an approval. So we want to actually go ahead and have the manager from the apartment company to go ahead and review this application. And now what I have here in this item link is here is where I'm going to link to the BPF. And we're actually linking to the BPF through an entity record, which is going to be our contact. So here I'm passing in the contact ID and the value. So when I go ahead and respond to this approval, I'll show you exactly how this works. And it'll make sense in terms of how we start to now move this contact through this rental business process. Lastly, once we have a response from our approver, so whether it's approved or rejected, we're then going to go ahead and send an email off to the original applicant indicating whether or not their application has been successful or if it has been denied. So now let's go up. We have a, a pen, uh, an approval waiting for us. And here, as you saw previously on the PDF, the person's name was Sparky Sanders. I can go ahead and click on this approval. And now I have this link. And when I click on this link, it's going to take me over to D365. But it's going to put me in the middle of this business process that I had created previously. And because we linked it to the contact, this is why we now see our business process light up in this ribbon um, for our contact record. So here we can see Sparky Sanders, who's a senior PMM with their email address. All of that information is now populated for that contact. But what I need to do in order to determine whether or not this person's a good fit, I need to take them through this apartment rental process, which would include their income verification, so we can verify that Sparky makes $92,000 a year, we can verify their employment, and that uh, Sparky is a senior PMM in this case. Then we'll move over to our next stage. And our next stage involves pets. And we can go through and you know review all of our policies and ensure that this pet, the poodle that's 10 pounds, aligns to our policies. And in this case, it does. Now, what we want to do next in the next stage is we're going to jump entities. Currently, we're in contact. Now, what we want to do is we want to actually move into the opportunity itself. So remember when we created that opportunity, 
and we did provide a linkage to the contact, that allows us to now transition into this opportunity where we can fill out the rest of our business process. So now we're going to navigate away. We're going to be on the opportunity, but we're still in the middle of our business process. And here's where we need to go ahead and provide our inventory check. And so we can go ahead and see exactly what Sparky is interested in. In this case, Sparky was interested in a one bedroom apartment with two bathrooms. So we'd have the ability to look into our inventory system and actually see if this is something that we can accommodate. In this case, we're going to go ahead and say yes, uh, we're good, and we can go ahead and click finish. So we've finished the BPF part of our business process, but we haven't completed our approval. Remember, we were prompted to access our BPF from our approval itself. So let's head back to our approval, and if everything checks up for us and aligns well, we'll go ahead and click on approve, and then we'll confirm the rest of our automated flow will complete. And if we head over to our inbox, we're going to see that Sparky's application has been approved. You know, welcome to Bellevue Manor. Now, quickly, what I will show you is how we can, how I constructed the BPF. So BPFs do light up underneath my flows. Uh, there's a third tab that is called business process flows. And within the business process flow, I can go ahead and click on apartment rental process. And this is where I essentially modeled my business process by introducing different stages. So here I have three different stages, the contact for the background check, I have pets, and I have inventory check. And then with each of the, within each of these stages, I can have different steps. And these are, in this case, data steps, where what it's forcing me to do is to provide a piece of data. And what I have to provide is the data field that I want to be able to populate and indicate whether or not it's required or not. Uh, similarly, you have another data step around the employment verification. If we head over to pets, we also have a data step for pets, and we also have a data step for inventory check. And just to reiterate, this is a business process that's spanning entities. Here I'm in opportunity, but over here I have contact, which is pretty powerful as you can essentially move your way through all of the modules inside of Dynamics. And now lastly, I did talk about Power BI previously, and this essentially is our Power BI dashboard for our process. So here we can see the different properties that exist. We can see the number of applications that exist. We can choose to filter based upon the property name. We can see the average income of our applicants. We can see the types of the, the proportion of uh, you know, apartment configurations that are being demanded upon. So three bedrooms, two bedroom, one bedroom, one bedroom versus two bedroom. You can also basically do some trending in terms of when people want to move in, which allows us to manage our inventory versus like basically people that are about to leave our apartment because they're going to live somewhere else. So this gives some immediate insight in terms of the, the you know, these inbound requests that are being made uh, for our apartment company. So I hope that gave you some insight in terms of how you can use flow in intelligent automation architectures. And I think, you know, this isn't something that requires a tremendous amount of skills. Um, you know, as you notice, I didn't write any code as, as writing this specific process, but it obviously is very powerful. And I think, you know, the, the number one way to improve productivity is to actually be able to automate. And you certainly want to automate and allow your employees to focus on more creative work and not this mundane work that actually can become error prone because people get bored with what they're actually doing. And I think using intelligent automation is actually a great way to boost the productivity of your organization and then also give people more meaningful work um, that actually challenges them and actually helps them grow. So that's it for this week. Steph Jan will be up net for next week. I want to thank uh, BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show, and we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday.